Mishnah Brura, in Pesach, chapter 434, the laws which apply immediately after the examination for Chametz. Paragraph 1. After the examination for Chametz, one must be careful with the Chametz, which he leaves over to put it away in a secluded place, so that he will not need to make an examination again because of it. A further examination will only be necessary if, for example, a mouse will take it in his presence, or if he will find that some of his bread is missing. For instance, if you, will put it down, if you will put down ten loaves and find later that there are only nine, ordinarily, however, when one does not know whether or not there is chametz missing, a further examination is not required. If, not, if one covered over the chametz with a vessel and subsequently does not find it there, he does not need to examine for it, as it will definitely have been taken by a person. Therefore, one should cover over the remaining chametz with a vessel, hang it in the air, or place it in a chest in a place which a mouse, uh, or place it in a chest in a place which a mouse cannot reach. Paragraph two. Immediately after the examination at night, one should nullify the chametz by saying, "All chametz that is in my possession, which I have not seen and which I have not disposed of, sh should become nullified, and should be like the dust of the earth." The gloss one should say the nullification in the language in which he understands. If one said the nullification in the holy tongue with the wording kol chamira, the word chamira includes both chametz and leaven. However, if one uses other languages, he must mention each one of them independently. It is desirable to nullify it at a later for to re-nullify it at a further stage on the day of the 14th of Nisan, at the end of the 5th seasonal hour, the nullification must be done before the 6th seasonal hour arrives, as once the 6th seasonal hour has arrived, it will be forbidden to benefit from the Chametz, and one will therefore be unable to nullify it. Gloss. On the day of the 14th of Nisan, one should not nullify the Chametz which remained in his possession until after he has burned the Chametz. He has to burn, so that he will fulfil the mitzvah of burning Chametz while it is still his. Paragraph 3. When one nullifies on the day of the 14th of Nisan, he should say, when he specifies the Chametz that he is nullifying the expanded wording, which I have seen and which I have not seen, which I have disposed of and which I have not disposed of. Paragraph 4. One's agent is able to nullify for one. When an agent nullifies, he must say, the Chametz of so-and-so should be nullified, etc. If a man is not at home, he should nullify the Chametz where he is. If he does not do so, it is desirable that his wife should nullify it. Back to the Mishnah Brewer. And has gone To examine another corner, a mouse will take the chametz in someone's presence and drag it away to the corner which has already been examined. Examined. Note two, which he leaves over, that is for him to eat. The same ruling applies to the chametz which one finds during the examination and puts aside to be disposed of on the morrow. The public only put away in a secluded place the chametz which one finds during the examination, but are not careful with the, with the rest of the chametz and take it hither and thither. They do not act properly. Note three, so that he will not need an examination, etc. However, even if such an examination must be made, it is nevertheless unnecessary to make a blessing a second time because of it. If one examined for lost chametz but did not find it, he must nullify once more, since this chametz which was dragged away by the mouse after the examination was not included with the chametz that was already nullified by him. This is because he left it over for his eating or in order to dispose of it on the morrow. However, it is in any case our practice to nullify a second time at the time when we burn the chametz. Note 4. He does not need to examine. If one covered over the comments with a vessel and substance is not fine there, he does not need to examine for it. Okay. Uh, he does not need to examine. This only applies if he left it in a high place where children's hands do not probe. One should cover note five in Mission Borough. One should cover the remaining comments with a vessel. To place the comments in a vessel and cover the vessel is forbidden because it is usual for rodents and reptiles to uncover vessels and reach their contents. However, when one covers over the chametz with a wide vessel, they cannot uncover it. This is that M-A. That's the Magen Avraham. 
Commentary to the Shul Aruch, Aruch by Rev. Avraham Abeli Gombina. Note 6. Immediately at night one should nullify the Chametz. The sages required one to nullify it, although according to Torah law the examination alone is sufficient and one does not need to be concerned about Chametz that he may not have, fa may not have found. According to Torah law it is sufficient to do, with, to do one of these acts. One may either examine the for chametz and dispose of the chametz he finds, or he may nullify his chametz. <coughs> Excuse me. Even if chametz remains in his home after the examination, he will not tra not transgress because of it as long as he does not know about it. Once he has examined well and did everything that he was required to do with respect to the disposal of his chametz, the reason why one must also nullify his chametz is because the sages were nevertheless afraid that one may otherwise stumble, as he may find later in appealing bread roll which is not intrinsically nullified in the way that crumbs are, and delay a little before burning it, thus transgressing the prohibition that chametz should not be seen in one's possession. However, if one has nullified his chametz, he will no longer transgress in any circumstances the prohibition that chametz should not be seen in one's possession, as then the chametz has become ownerless and is not his. Note 7. Which I have not seen and which I have not disposed of. However, there is no point in nullifying then the chametz which one has seen and re removed. This is because he still wishes to eat from what he has left over, and in addition, it should remain his, so that he will be able to fulfill the mitzvah of burning chametz on the morrow with chametz that is still his. Therefore, one does not nullify all the chametz until the morrow after he has finished eating chametz, and after he has burnt the rest of the known chametz. Note 8. So... In the in the in the statement that we make, everything should become nullified like the dust of the earth. Note eight: It is correct practice to say and should be ownerless like the dust of the earth. This wording, declaring it ownerless, is of avail for one's chametz according to all authorities, even though one says the wording in private and not in the presence of other people. Uh, point nine: Note nine in the language in which he understands. This is because the nullification is of the nature of rendering ownerless, and if one is not aware of the significance of what he is saying, the nullification cannot be of avail. Consequently, it is desirable to instruct ignoramus, ignoramuses excuse me, and also women who nullify when they do not understand the holy tongue to say the nullification in the language they understand, i.e., if their language is Yiddish, they should say, Alain Chametz, Adezoyed, Taig, Thus, es is in main reshus zal zain hefke un zal nit zain gerchint na azoi vi elt in gas. If an ignoramus said the nullification in the holy tongue, then if he was at least aware of the character, by the way, excuse the poor pronunciation of the Yiddish. If an ignoramus said the nullification in the holy tongue, then if he was at least aware of the character of nullification, meaning that he was aware of the fact that he was declaring his own his chametz ownerless, he is ruled to have fulfilled his obligation now that it is after the event. However, if he did not understand what is involved at all, but thought that he was saying some supplicatory prayer, he is not ruled to have fulfilled his obligation, obligation even now that it is after the event. Note 10, in the holy tongue. Uh, if one said the nullification in the holy tongue. Right. This wording is imprecise. What is meant is not Hebrew, but the language of the traditional translation of the Torah, i.e. Aramaic, which is the language in which we say the nullification. when he decided to eat from it. Consequently, there are grounds for concern that an olive's bulk of, his, of this chametz may remain and will, he will transgress because of it. Therefore, one should re-nullify in the daytime all chametz in his possession. Nevertheless, one should not rely on the nullification he makes by day alone and not nullify at night, as we are afraid that one may forget to nullify until the sixth seasonal hour when nullification is no longer of avail. Note 12. Note 12. Let's see what it says. It's from the gloss. On the other foot in Nissan, one should not nullify the
days in. agent. For him, this applies only if one explicitly instructed that I want some Another acronym. Uh, note 15 is able to nullify. So one J, one's agent is able to nullify one for one. Uh, now, if one says to his fellow, go and declare my possessions ownerless, this is of no significance whatsoever. In fact, one's possessions will not become ownerless unless he himself declares them ownerless. However, although nullification is of the nature of rendering ownerless, since the nullification of Hamas is involved here, one can be lenient. The reason is that once Hametz is not regarded as his own at the time when, when by having Hametz he transgresses the, pro the prohibitions that Hametz should not be seen and should not be found in one's possession as he is forbidden to benefit from it then. One only transgresses due to this Hametz because the Torah placed it in his possession with respect to these prohibitions. Therefore, a mere revelation of one's attitude, whereby one indicates that he is unwilling to have any possession of the Hametz, is sufficient for it to be removed from his possession even with respect to these prohibitions. There are authorities who are stringent about the validity of nullification by an agent. In a time of pressing need, one may be lenient since the majority of Paschim agree with the view of the author of the Shulchan Aruch. Nevertheless, all this only applies if one appointed the agent for this, pro for this purpose of nullifying his comments. If one was not appointed by his fellow as his agent for this purpose, however, he is unable to nullify his fellow's chametz, not even in, sex, in circumstances where it is to his fellow's advantage, such as when his fellows on the road have got to nullify his chametz. Prima got him in his opening discourse. Note 16, the chametz of so-and-so. So, uh, that's the statement, statement made by the agent. The statement of so-and-so, the chametz of so-and-so should be nullified. I.e., he should not say the chametz that is in this house, in case the owner has chametz somewhere else. The acronym write that for the nullification by day and agent should say the wording, all chametz that is in the possession A guardian of orphans is obliged to examine for, dispose of, and nullify the chametz of the orphans. In a locality where remuneration is given for the examination, he may also give somebody remuneration for doing the examination. If the guardian transgressed and did not dispose of the chametz and did not nullify it, and Pesach passed with it, still in the possession of the orphans so that they can no longer benefit from it, he cannot be held liable for the loss since the guardian is only liable for, for negligence. If an orphan who is a child does not have a guardian and Pesach passed with his chametz still in his possession, it may be that his chametz is not prohibited. For then, there is nobody who deserves to be penalized for this. Prima guardian, see further there what he has written about this. Note 17, if a man is not at home. If man's not at home, he should nullify the chametz where he is. Um, I.e., and if and he did not appoint an agent to nullify his chametz. According to what we have written previously in subparagraph 15, that there are authorities who are stringent and rule that it is of no avail for an agent to nullify one's chametz. It is proper for someone who is away from home to nullify the chametz himself there, where he is as well, even if he appointed an agent to examine for and nullify his chametz. Note 18, if he does not do so. At first glance, one may wonder how the wife knows that the husband will not, will not nullify the chametz himself where he is. However, what is meant is that the husband does not usually do so. Consequently, we are afraid that he may forget to nullify the chametz and it is therefore desirable that his wife should nullify it. This applies even if the husband did not bid her to nullify it, as generally it may be regarded as if he gave her the authority to do it. It is proper to admonish the wife about this. Nevertheless, it is not worthwhile initially for one to rely entirely on the nullification of his wife, since the chametz is at any rate not hers. He should, in fact, nullify it himself where he is. Note 19. Uh, if he does not do so, it is desirable that his wife should nullify it. So that his wife should nullify it. She should say, All chametz that is in the possession of my husband that he is aware of, etc. If she does not understand the holy tongue, she may say the nullification in the language that she understands, as stated above in the gloss to paragraph 2. Even if she is not capable of examining for the chametz herself and she appointed an agent to examine her rooms for chametz instead of her, it is nevertheless better for her to do the nullification herself in the language which she understands. This is because even where the husband himself appoints the agent, there are authorities who question whether the appointment of the agent avails for his nullification to be effective. 
Therefore, it is certainly questionable whether the appointment of an agent for this purpose by the wife is of avail, since the chametz, chametz is in actual fact not hers. A widow may nullify her chametz by herself or appoint an agent to do so, as ruled above with respect to a man, since the chametz is hers. That's the end.